Okay, um, it's 7 p.m. Uh, I'm welcoming people to the Conservation Commission meeting of May 27, 2021. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, section 20. Um, so I'll call the meeting to order and I'll take a roll call. Tim Hilchey present, Pete Law. Ben Byrne present. Pete. He's muted. Are you present, Pete? Pete, are you hearing me? Pete Law? He doesn't seem to be. Um, Let me think. Let's see. I can hear you, Pete, but can you hear us? Sorry, we're working out our technical difficulties. Can you hear me now, Tim? Excellent. Okay, so um, for the, for the uh, commissioners who are present, uh, did everyone have a chance to review the, min the mail minutes from last meeting? Uh, Pete Law, yes. Do you see anything that you felt needed to be corrected, Pete? Uh, no, I did not. How about you, Ben? You weren't present at the last meeting, I, I think, so. Correct, I was absent. So you, usually you just abstain then, yes? Yes, I abstain for a minute. Okay. All right, so I'll make a motion, uh, Tim, to accept the meetings from the April 29th, 2021 uh, minutes that were sent. And I'll second that. And um, there's no discussion, no. Take a vote. All in Pete. favor? Yeah, Pete Law, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Okay, thank you. All right, so the first order of business tonight is um, an RDA for 299 Greenfield Road. Mr. Avery is here. Um, if he wants to unmute and uh, give us a little discussion about his project, I'd appreciate that. I believe I'm unmuted. Try again. So, uh, can we hear him? Yeah, I can. Okay, great. So, Mr. Avery, um, just tell us briefly about your project. If you'd like, I can pull up some. I think I have some images that I'll show when we get to the further discussion, but. Um, I purchased the property um, to fix it up and, and uh, sell it, uh, and I had a lot of brush around it, so that's where I started, and uh, then I guess we had some issues because uh, you, you felt I was too close to the, the uh, wetlands there. So uh, we're here to address that tonight. Okay, so um, Pete Law and I were able to go out with Mr. Avery and tour the property last week, was it? The week before? Yes. And yes. saw the work that he'd been doing. Um, Pete, could you um, give me your observations about uh, the visit? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see that, uh, the property is being upgraded there. Um, that's great to see there is, it is close to the, uh, the little brooklet or swale going through the property. I think right on the front of closer to five and 10, there was probably a little bit of clear where there could be erosion in a, in a rain event. Um, I'm the rest of it is still... I'm sorry. Could I, could 
I uh, interrupt because I was there last night and there was quite a rain. And it's coming down the side of Route 5. I have a lot of and it's emptying onto my property. Um, it's clearly coming from the pavement of, of Route 5. So how do I address that? So I've shared the screen of the image where um, I think Pete Law has mentioned that there is some evidence of erosion. Um, and uh, Mr. Avery, are you saying that uh, this, can you see this image? I can, yes. Um, are you saying that the water is coming off of Route 5 and moving in this direction, or is, is it moving um, from, your, from your driveway area? Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you, what you saw last night? Well, last night, what I witnessed was, you know, I had wondered why the, the front of my lawn, right by the driveway on the southern side, um, had so much water there. Uh, you know, it's a flat area. Where is it coming from? Well, I found out last night. It is coming from Route 5. It was like a brook coming down the side of it from the uh, butterfly uh, area and emptying onto my property. Where was it in relation to the house? Was it actually in front of the house, at the side of the house? In the front of the house. But uh, any of the uh, rainwaters, um, you know, on a heavy downpour like we had last night, they they come onto my property. So, you know, I'm not disputing what, what else you uh, have found, but uh, I now know where a lot of the, the wet is right coming So, um, just for the uh, for the the, the audience, um, Mr. Avery is is rehabbing a small three bedroom, and he's also um, uh, restoring, updating um, a septic system that is out behind the house, um, also near a um, what looks like a brook area. It's uh, this picture shows the front left of the property and there's a stream that it's intermittent. It comes from um, the route five direction and it sort of circles around the property and turns to the south behind the property uh, or behind the, this section of the property. I think Mr. Avery owns some land further along. Is that correct, Mr. Avery? Yeah, it, it uh, basically horseshoes around the property. Okay. And um, I'm not sure. I'm going to stop sharing this picture and uh, see if I can. Um, I don't know if I can call up. Uh, let me try another thing and see if this is going to be helpful at all. Some of the paperwork I got from um, Town Hall concerning your. Um, your septic system doesn't really show the property all that uh, well, but I'm going to try and uh, show it for briefly, just so that we can. Uh... So here's Greenfield Road, if you can see my cursor moving. Here's the existing house at the front uh, middle of this page. And um, then the septic system, is this correct? The position is down near the bottom of the picture, right? Yes. Okay. And so um, the little area that we were seeing in the previous picture, there's a little area of erosion over here to the top left of uh, where the property meets Greenfield Road. Correct. And overall, there you'd cleared all the all of the um, considerable growth of brush and everything around the house, and uh, removed one or two trees that were uh, impinging on the uh, looming on the house. So 
it was at that point that uh, we were made aware that uh, activity was going on. So um, I stopped in and said that, uh, you know, it appeared that you needed at least to uh, come to the Conservation Commission to discuss the project. Uh, so thank you for filing the RDA. Pete, do you have any, um, with this image, do you have any uh, information you want to share? Um, no, it's, um, if I'm looking at it, it's, it's kind of underneath the, the green as part of the Greenfield Road. If you come down to the bottom of the screen, that was where the uh, little brook comes through. You can see behind this, where the septic is. And, and I think, um, you know, that was the area that was a little bit of concern. And there's a building to take out down here. It all wraps around. So, you know, I think we need maybe some uh, corrosion control there. And Mr. Avery, I'm not sure what's coming from the southern side, which uh, you mentioned earlier from Route uh, five and ten, uh, but I don't, I don't know enough in the jurisdiction. But that is a state highway, and maybe they, I mean, maybe the the drainage isn't so good there. I really don't know. But I was looking at the northern side of the driveway where that um, little intermittent brooklet comes through. Yeah, right. I was just uh, purely adding that a lot of the water comes from the highway. Yeah. Um, you know what I did. Obviously, I did, but the, uh, the water uh, comes comes from my land. So your goal is to reestablish the uh, to to put in the the um, upgraded um, septic system and reestablish the lawn. Um, the current conditions are that uh, a lot of the the preliminary work for clearing the brush and the whole property has been done. Um, yeah, have, right. I just want to establish the lawn. Right. And you need to um, take care of the building. You need to do some grading and so forth and, and, and finish preparation for putting seeding the lawn and so forth. Well, kind of like rototilling, smooth it out, get it so I can seed it and be mm -hmm. done with it. Okay. So, um, I was thinking, um, Pete, and maybe you can uh, help me with this. The, uh, we had discussed when we were there the other night that maybe there needed to be some erosion control around that area and then the, to the um, left of the driveway in this picture where my cursor is moving. Um, I wondered if it might make more sense to, to do something like seed that area um, because um, where are we going to put the erosion controls down the bank? Um, but maybe we have to do both. I'm not sure. And since he's going to seed anyway, so I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, it'd have to be right on top of the bank if we're going to do more, you know, rototilling and up and pulling up the uh, the turf a little bit there. That you know, there could be some there. I, I would say just in that area that was cleared out, um, right at the top of the ridge where the the activity would stop on the road tilling mm -hmm. and then if we did want to um, go ahead and, and work on that back building the same type of uh, just a catch behind there just a quick erosion control of, right um, you know nothing ex extravagant just enough to catch it and then get the seed and get the lawn to really take place and uh, like, I think that'll yeah. hold it like hay waddles uh, through there. Uh, the cylinders, uh, I think they're a little more effective than, than the hay bales and the, mm -hmm. than the built fence. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, something fairly simple like that, but just to kind of control it where it was cleared out there in the front um, and in behind if you want to do that uh, building removal. Because um, it is, it's a pretty, Steep, uh, steep pitch right there, and I think that would take care of it. And once you get the the lawn established, it should be good to go. It's a very steep pitch, and uh, I, you know, I'm in agreement with you. Okay, well, um, so I think basically, are are I don't have any other issues with the thing. I think your recommendations are are what needs to take place, Pete. So if you wanted to, um, should we do this in? Uh, two motions um, 
deal with the north, the, the, the left front part of the property and then talk about the back or do you want to just blend it all together? So. I, I'm just taking on that. Um, ben, I know you didn't have a chance to see it, but jump in at any time too. Um, well, technically it should be all underneath the same heading, shouldn't it? Yeah, so I'd make a motion that we that the that there's a requirement for erosion control from the route five and ten back around any activity that's going on in the um, in the property, including going around the building um, until this, till the lawn the seeds really comes through and is established. And um, and do you want to deal with the back barn area too, or is that? Yeah, and I have to uh, retract that and redo it, but I, that's what I meant, that whole area around the brook on the property and okay, the so activity. Like here, yeah. when the cursor is moving. Okay, so if that's what you meant, then uh, um, you just want to restate it. Okay, so I'd make a motion that erosion control um, procedures are put in place from along that northern to southern side of the property from Route 5 back to beyond the small building that might be removed um, when there's any uh, activity uh, taking place on that property. And uh, they should remain in place until the, the lawn is established? Correct. <laughs> I'm trying to do like three things at once here. I'm trying to work through that. So I'll retract that motion. <laughs> um, so I'll make another motion that there's erosion control from the Greenfield Road all the way across the northern part of the property that wraps around the older utility building in the back during any construction period until the building is removed and all the lawn activity is uh, in place and established. Okay, um, so um, I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion? No, that should uh, about sum it up. Okay, well, hearing no further discussion, um, I will call or I will move the motion. And uh, I, uh, Tim Hilchey, I vote aye. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions of us, Mr. Avery? I do not. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to stop sharing. I appreciate your your help and cooperation on this. And uh, if you have nothing else, then uh, we'll uh, let you go. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, the next order of business is uh, an RDA for 26 Meadowwood Drive. Um, there was, uh, before we started recording the meeting, um, Alex Hirschenreiter, who is um, providing the tech support for this meeting, mentioned that he was technically an abutter. Um, but we discussed it, and he's not going to he's not going to participate in these discussions. So um, we left him <laughs> to take care of the technical side of things. And so now I'll turn it over to um, Sherry Morgan and her representatives. Can you discuss the project for us? Uh, yes, thank you, Tim. Um, the primary purpose of the project is to control Japanese knotweed, which has come up behind my house. And I had um, a company called Land Stewardship Inc. out of Turner's Falls come out and look at my property and um, write a report for me to how to control the Japanese knotweed. I also have some uh, vines of bittersweet there as well. The My property um, 
it's forested in the back and it slopes down. The majority of the Japanese knotweed is on the slope behind my house, but um, it drops down to a seep in the bottom. And there are about um, a dozen stems of the knotweed uh, at the edge of the seep. And so uh, Land Stewardship Inc. recommended that I contact the, the Conservation Commission. Um, and so the, the control plan that they wrote for me calls for cutting the knotweed back in June and then um, very carefully using um, rodeo in August or September. And in the area down near the bottom uh, their recommendation is to um, either hand wipe rodeo onto the plants or to use um, stem injection. And in the plan, you'll see there's some other requirements. They're very careful about application, um, uh, not applying when the wind is blowing. Um, they'll do it when, um, you know, there's no rain in the forecast. Um, I had had um, asked a couple of people I knew for a company that's very, very careful about, that has experience in controlling Japanese knotweed, but they are also very, very careful in the use of an herbicide. And I've done enough reading. Joan, who's on the phone or on the Zoom, has also said that you cannot control Japanese knotweed without use of an herbicide. Um, and my biggest concern that is if I don't control it, it's going to eventually spread to my neighbor's property. And um, from what I've seen of Japanese knotweed growing throughout the Deerfield River Valley is that if I don't control this, it's eventually gonna spread to neighboring property and it's going to continue spreading behind the houses on um, on my street and so what I want to do is is control the knotweed. Um, I'd like to ask um, Joan can you um, explain um, what the lines in, in, in this image mean? The blue line and the yellow, the yellow line, I assume, is the property line. Yeah, the um, the blue line is um, a wetland line. <clears throat> Sherry's property, as she said, goes down uh, towards the northeast, goes down towards this seep, and then beyond beyond the seep, there's uh, a I think it's an intermittent stream, but it doesn't impinge on her property. Right, and um, the seep is—is is that in where my little X is moving around? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's what I, I just wanted to make sure that I remembered correctly. And there's a lot of knotweed growing in this area and behind your deck, right? Right. And then there's a little bit down in the seep. Right. Yeah, there's a few scattered stems down there. Okay, Pete, what do you have to, um, to say about uh, after our site visit? What are your thoughts? I think you're he's, still muted. He's muted, yep. All right, I didn't know I hit that button in my back. Yeah, you're back. Uh, yeah. me, and, me and technology are not the best friends. Um, no, I think the overall plan was was quite thorough. Uh, Joan, the, maybe it's a question for you, but the Rodeo is an herbicide. Can you tell me a little bit about what type of herbicide that is and how that functions? Um, Rodeo is a it's a glyphosate product, <clears throat> and it has uh, it's allowed to be used in sensitive areas, which is why we use it. Um, 
we use it at a as at, at as low an effective concentration as possible. So it might be anywhere between a two and five percent concentration in the foliar. In the uh, it's a higher concentration for hand wiping and higher still for stem injection because the stem injection inserts uh, you use a needle literally that inserts the herbicide directly into the stem of the knotweed plants, and so there's no. Um, it, it, it doesn't go any, the herbicide doesn't go anywhere but down into the stem and it's very effective at killing the rhizomes. The prop, the only drawback to it is the, it, um, the stems need to be of a certain diameter to accept the needle. If they're uh, really small, uh, small diameter plants, then that, they have to be hand wiped. Okay. And with this type of application where it's not a stem injection or a hand wipe, you're doing it above um, concerns on any other uh, runoff or uh, uh, effect on any of the other vegetation in the area? I don't have any concerns at all about runoff. It dry, it, um, when it's fully applied, it dries within a matter of minutes. And so it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, great. And there'd be a licensed um, herbicide applicator doing all this work? Yes, all, everyone at my company has a mass pesticide license. Okay. And did, does this um, rodeo, does it break down relatively quickly? Is it a, a fast acting thing that dissipates? Yes. Okay. And we don't, the, part of the restrictions on the use of it, for instance, is you don't use it when it's over like 85 degrees. Um, so, so there's there's a, a windows within which we can use it. The reason we cut it in June is that when we come back to treat it later on in the summer, the plants, for one thing, they've already been challenged by having to regrow in one growing season, but also the um, plants aren't as tall, so it reduces the amount of herbicide we have to use in anyways. And this, um, if I recalling from from the app. Uh, from the report. This is a three-year project for you, um, Sherry? Yes. And uh, you and uh, you and um, your land stewardship will be working together on this during that time? Yes, they're actually doing uh, the work. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Ben, do you have any input? Uh, no. Um, uh, again, I think most of that's all pretty straightforward. All right. Um, well, I think, um, I'm not hundred percent sure about this, but I think that we're probably going to be looking for a negative determination B3 or two. I, I'd have to look at the RDA form, but Basically, I think the plan's well designed, and um, that hopefully it will accomplish the, your goals. Um, because I certainly understand the desire to stop it while you can. Um, so yeah, it would be especially good to keep it under control at Sherry's place because you don't want it in that that whole back area. That would be a real bummer. Right. So not to use a technical term, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Pete, uh, Pete Law. I am working on a small screen, so I do not have the RDA in front of me. I'm only looking at one at a time. So I'm not quite sure which section was filled out for the uh, negative determination. But well, uh, yeah, that one is, this one is um, WPA form one. And we're going to have to, fill out WPA form two, which is what our finding will be. So um, let me show, let me go to the section of this form that was submitted. It says whether the area depicted on the plans is in an area subject to the jurisdiction. And they've, they've highlighted um, B1A and 1C. And um, I think that uh, if uh, let me uh, let me quickly try and just call up something on my screen here, um, the, the form that we're going to be um, filing in response. Well, of course, 
I'm going to stop the share because what I need is hiding behind all these windows on my screen. Where are you? Actually, uh, Joan, you probably work with these forms quite a bit. Do you um, remember the language from form two that we're trying to? I, there are several uh, ones. I think it's a negative determination that um, the, uh, I can't remember. Honestly, I'm sorry. No, yeah, that, that's I, fine. Um, um, I'm having a similar uh, moment. Yeah, my apologies too. I can't pull everything up on this little screen. Um, uh, we are, let me see, WAP. And whenever I open a form, um, a Word document on my screen, it converts it to uh, Apple friendly. So now I'm going to share my screen again and just. Um, so under determinations um, on form two, which is our response, I think three um, determinations, section B, um, the work described is within an area subject to protection under the act. Uh, or I guess it's two that we want will not. Uh, the boundary delineations of the following resource um, no, that's not it. Well, this is, um, uh, it, basically the works within a resource area, but it's not going to do any, it's not going to, um, it's not going to you're not going to be filling, removing, dredging, or altering the area. So that's no. essentially um, what we're but, going to be. So I think if you go back to the I, RDA, it's a negative finding for both B and C. Um, I, on the, I have W2, uh, WPA2 up, and it's then under negative determination, it's, um, that's, I think it's two. It's uh, mm -hmm. the work is within an air, no, the work is not within an area subject to the protection. Therefore, it doesn't require filing of a notice of intent. Right, okay, so this is where I am, negative determination, sorry. Right, because it's outside the area. We follow the rules, but we don't need a, a, a NOI on that. Right, so yeah, that's the, so it's it's this, this one I hear, uh, I believe it's the third one under negative determination, so. Um, the work described in the request is within the buffer zone as defined in the re regulations, but will not alter an area subject to protection under the act. Therefore, said work does not require filing of an NOI subject to the following conditions, if any. Did you have yeah. any thoughts about conditions, um, Pete, when we visited the site, uh, there was um, an area that had been pretty much cleared it was um, sort of dirt. I don't know that there's any um, any need for a... Uh, no, I didn't. This is uh, Pete Law. I didn't have any uh, other um, requirements there. I just wanted to verify uh, knowing enough about rodeo and the application with the glyphosate. It does break down really quickly. There's not so much of a concern of runoff and and movement to other vegetation. So I, I, I don't have any other concerns on that. Okay, well, um, if there's no other discussion, then I will uh, make a motion to um, that we approve a negative determination three for the project. And um, which I, I've just read the, the language for. Okay, does Pete Lloyd second that? Um, motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Ben, do you have any thoughts? Nope. Okay, hearing no further discussion, um, I will uh, make a roll call. Um, Tim Hilchey, aye. 
Elaw, aye. Ben Byrne, aye. Okay. Um, motion is carried three to nothing. And uh, so um, I think you're ready to move forward with your plan. Uh, so thank you for coming tonight. And um, if you have any need to reach out to us, feel free to do so. All right, thank you, Ian. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Next, uh, next up is um, an RDA from Eversource um, concerning some line work and pads that they have to uh, install in wetland areas. So, welcome. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Rihanna Summers, um, and I work for Epsilon Associates, and I'm here with David Askew from Eversource. Um, and we are here tonight to discuss the Eversource Line 312 structure replacement project. Um, specifically within the town of Deerfield, there's four existing transmission line structures that are proposed for replacement. Um, and this, basically it's just with age, um, they're existing wood pole structures, but um, they have deterioration and they've just, it basically reached the end of their service life. So they're proposing to replace them in kind. Um, they're all located within the existing Eversource right-of-way. Um, and if it's okay, I'll share my screen um, and pull up the pan. Let's see. Thank you. Um, sure, yeah, so these, so there's two different locations and we did do a site walk, I think it was last week, Tuesday, just to review these different locations. One of the structures is located off of Greenfield Road, and it's basically at the top of a hill. Um, and at the bottom of the roadway embankment is a wetland, so it's in buffer zone. And that structure is accessed uh, through the Lamore Lumberyard. And then the other three structures are all located off River Road. Um, one is in Uplands to the east of the road, and then the other two structures are in buffer zone. Um, west of River Road. And the structure replacements themselves will be performed in accordance with the um, utility maintenance provision of the Wetlands Protection Act. But the reason for filing the RDA is that um, there's a proposed permanent gravel work pad at the structure off Greenfield Road in the buffer zone. And there's also some proposed gravel access improvements also in buffer zone off River Road. So I'll, um, I'm just going to change the screen that I'm sharing. Let's see. Share, uh, share the plan. Um, so this, this is the structure off of Greenfield Road where the permanent gravel work pad is proposed. And basically, so um, they're proposing to put to grade and put in a permanent gravel workspace. It'll be approximately 60 feet wide by about 120 feet long. And this will be, so the structure is at the top of a slope um, in between Greenfield Road and the Pan Am Railroad right of way. So it's a tight work area, um, but basically due to the topography and the tricky, I mean, it's just very steep there. So they couldn't really safely put in temporary construction mats, which is, which is why they're proposing the gravel pad because it'll um, create a safe and level work area for the cranes. Um, they'll need some large equipment like a crane to replace the structure and and also the gravel will just be useful for longer term maintenance and any emergency work that they have to do on the line um, at the structure. Uh, so that's proposed within the buffer zone. There is a wetland at the bottom of the slope, but like I said, it's a pretty steep slope. So it's um, they'll put in sediment controls, but yeah, so that's, that's the first area. Um, and then the, so off of River Road is our second area where there's some gravel access improvements proposed um, east of structure 36070. Um, and the reason for this is, again, due to the topography in this area, um, on the site walk we saw it's kind of just varying topography um, kind of up and down and 
they would actually have to do more grading to put in the construction mats than what they would have to do to put in the gravel. So it's just easier for them. Um, and it, they wouldn't be able to drive over this without some improvements to safely access the structure. So um, because they're like in pretty close proximity to this wetland series DEW6, they'll put in sediment controls, um, typically compost tubes or um, straw wattles um, in between the limits of work before they start grading. Um, and this gravel access, basically they'll grade, put down, um, it's about eight to 12 inches of riprap, and then they'll cover that in, or they'll top dress it with gravel. And the, the road will be about 16 feet wide and it, it's about 120 feet long. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what's proposed. And like I said, they'll put in the sediment controls before they start the work. Um, this project will also have weekly SWIP inspections during the construction. So there'll be an environmental monitor out there keeping an eye on the sediment controls. And um, after the work is done, we'll come back and make sure that um, any disturbed areas are stabilized um, and seeded and mulched. And I think that's basically it, um, unless there's any questions. Well, Peter, did you um, did you have any in our site visit? We, I think, David, did you mention that uh, you were in this area where you're going to build um, the little roadway? Um, there's sort of a an upslope there that you're going to take out, but you're going to leave like this portion of it closest to the wetland area as a berm or something like that. Or, or did I did I hear that correctly? No, that's correct. We're going to we're going to leave that just so there's no um, flow off the gravel part of the road um, towards that wetland. So it's kind of diverted. There is actually a, a, a path pathway um, just a little to the west of where that berm is. So it'll it'll just kind of direct the water down into that pathway. I don't think it'll be enough water to, um, you know, go down towards the other wetland, but it'll at least keep the any storm water from flowing directly into that wetland. And we'll also, um, you know, put any necessary erosion controls, waddles in that location just to make sure um, no drainage comes off the road into that wetland. Hi, this is Pete Law. Uh, um, Dave, I think you were just talking, I'm just looking at your name, sorry about that. Yeah. So right. as, as I look at that, that gravel part there where the wetlands are, I'm looking at my map, it's off to the left, but the, the DW or DEW6. So when you come up there, you're going to make a berm. How high is that berm on the south side? Well, that there's was? actually there's actually an existing berm that we're we're cutting through. All I was saying is that on the on the south side, we won't we won't breach the berm um, between the road and that little spur of the wetland. Okay. Um, just so that there's no uh, possibility of drainage off the road into that wetland. So it's okay. just kind of a, a permanent protective measure. And will there be additional erosion control in that area? You know, as needed, if, uh, you know, the berm should be, it, it's permanent, the berm is permanent. So there sh really shouldn't be too much erosion, but down towards the, uh, once you get past it, once you're into the matting, we will we'll probably need some waddles in that location um, just to kind of cover, you know, um, address the entire area so there's no possibility of runoff uh, towards that wetland. So as needed, who makes that decision? Uh, well, again, we have, um, well, first first and foremost, we have excellent contractors who are, are pretty good. Um, we only use three contractors for all this work. Um, so they're pretty tuned into all of our BMPs and our environmental um, requirements. And we have a BMP manual that they um, have to follow. But um, the hedge against that is that there will be um, SWIP inspections regularly from Epsilon um, throughout the duration of the project. And they'll be, they'll be out there essentially daily um, for regular inspections. And they also have to do um, event um, inspections after rainfall. So all, all, all our projects are pretty tight 
uh, tightly controlled in terms of uh, environmental inspections. So, and, and you, you're looking for um, what sort of determination from us? So a negative determination three, I believe. So the same thing as we did in the previous. Correct, uh, which yeah. is. Uh, just before we get to that, Tim, as people, oh, yeah, yeah. if I may, um, just on that site walk, it, it was pretty tight there to the to that wetlands on the side coming up there. So I right. understand the berm, at, at the existing berm, but I still don't understand your exact method of erosion control on that side. And just a, a just a general comment as I walk the land here, everything, the, the, the further north you can stay uh, with that and push things north, and things can be graded north or whatever, uh, but north is good for water flow. And then with the pole reduction, everything should be going west. Um, there shouldn't be any real activity coming east, if you will, into that wetlands. And I just wanted to, to uh, double check on that as well. Yeah, there will be um, virtually no ground disturbance with all of that matting. Um, so the very limited ground disturbance is associated with it, just that little section of road. And all I was saying is that we, we're going to cut through the existing berm for the road, but we'll maintain the, the berm on the south side of the road. So nothing can, no water can um, come off the road into that little spur of a wetland. That was my only it's and it's mm -hmm. you know we're, we're talking about an area about um maybe yeah. 10 feet 10 feet long and you know five or six feet to the edge of the wetland in that spot yep yeah it was pretty tight there but it was pretty short um yeah right and then if i could uh, go back to the the first one over by greenfield road by the lumber yard yeah um if i looked at and i have the map here i think it's de W1, it says small area of wetlands, I think on the southern side of the pad. When we looked at that, there was existing riprap there. Um, it wasn't in very good shape. Uh, there was Correct. vegetation built into there. It was, there was a lot of channeling. Uh, it wasn't really going to hold back too much, if you will. Um, what's your plans for that riprap before you start the construction on that pad? Um, well, the, uh, the riprap is really at the edge of the pad. It's not, it doesn't extend yeah. into the wetland. It's right on the lip of the, uh, the edge of the, the slope. Um, but it's right so, where any uh, water is going to come off that hill from the uh, eastern side. Yeah. You can see uh, a channel come right through there and it's going to go right through that. So if you, if you do have disturbance there, we're going to pick up a lot of stuff going through that, I think. Yeah. So our, our plan there. Um, and, and actually it may not reflect, be reflected exactly on, on this plan is that um, we will, what we'll do is we'll pull back all of the loose dirt from the top of the, the slope and we'll re-rip wrap it, just repair it all, make a good plunge pool, a full um, rip wrap berm. And I suspect over just that little area, if they actually have to, um, make a flat surface area for their construction equipment, I think we'll just mat it. Um, and it may actually be right in that very small corner. It'll be the southeast um, uh, yeah, or southwest, right. west, southwest corner. Southwest of, side, yeah. Yeah, where the, uh, where the um, gravel is shown. So there may actually be just one mat there to, uh, that they'll, they'll grade out the um the side slope so they can get one one or two mats that'll fit in with the existing gravel um just to keep that drainage open during construction and then when we leave we'll completely repair that and uh, leave a stable um riprap plunge pool and and then a bleed off into that wet, lower wetland yeah and are those all those aspects within your work plan within your um, we we probably, you know, we typically address those things. Um, we do a construction authorization. So those are either specified there or we will um, actually, we can make a, a note tonight to specify that um, directly on the plan. So okay. I will ask Epsilon to do a call out on the plan to, um, to rip wrap um, that area. Okay. That would, uh, 
that'd be good if we could uh, um, just get that into the plan specified just in case something happens because it, it, yeah. it was quite a bit you could see where the water was coming off the eastern side off that hill down through there and that uh it really uh wasn't going to stop a whole lot so stop some but that riprap needed to be repaired okay yeah so what we'll do we'll, we'll revise this plan and we'll just send you a copy of the the revised page once we uh once we make that change thank you Any other um, questions or concerns from the commissioners? Okay, um, well, in that case, um, are we comfortable with making a motion? This is gonna be a negative three of the RDA? Yes. Is this all one RDA or could we divide it between the I believe it was one. Two. Oh, okay. one. Yes. All one. Okay. So you're gonna have to bear with me because this might be a long one. I may have to redo it again, Tim. But this is Pete Law. I'm making a motion to um, move forward with the negative three determination of the RDA with the following uh, criteria. First being to ensure that in the plan that we maintain the berm on the south side of the road on um, close to DEW6 of the map and utilize control uh, erosion control as necessary. And the second uh, criteria would be to revise the plan for areas uh, DEW1 um, to make sure we have proper uh, erosion control in there and, and um, redo the riprap to uh, proper standards, mat if needed. Sounds good to me. I, I think that's comprehensive and so I'd second that motion. Is there any further discussion from commissioners? No, agreed. Okay, um, so I will uh, call the call the motion, and I will say Tim Hilchey, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Ben Byrne, aye. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, thank you for Rihanna yep. and uh, David for coming and helping us out. Yes. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate Have it. Good night. Good night now. Thanks. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right, so the next thing, uh, next order of business is um, WPA Form 9 for a property at 198 North Main Street. Um, and I believe that uh, Mr. Decker is here and is it Ward Smith? Yes. Um, and uh, so I will briefly say that uh, this came to our attention. Somebody who was walking by the property noticed activity um, notified the Conservation Commission. Um, I went by the property, just took some pictures because I didn't know uh, exactly what was, uh, what was being done there and sent them to Mark Stenson at the DEP to ask his advice. Um, he did some aerial work on, I think, the GIS system, and um, he recommended that it looked that this was a possible um, instance where that we should uh, go to an enforcement order. Um, at that point, um, I asked Sue Brulot, who's the town building department um, assistant administrators uh, to try to find out who owned the property. Um, and um, she came back and said that it was Mr. Decker's property. And so following Mr. Stenson's advice, we 
went forward with this, um, but um, he was basing his advice on looking at canopy cover, et cetera, for, for pictures that might, might have been outdated. So um, in any case, I'd like to turn it over to you and Mr. Decker to talk about what your goals there were, what your intentions were, and uh, see what we can do to. I, yeah, I, I, can, I can let Mr. Decker speak for himself because I didn't look at the site before the work was completed. I did look at the site today. Um, it did appear to me like most of the trees that were cut were dead when they were cut. I don't know if all of them were. Um, I, would you, Bob, would you like to at least uh, say what you did and why, what your rationale was for doing it? There were two trees that were dead mm -hmm. next to Jackson Road. One had fallen down and broken last year. Uh, the other one was dead as a doornail. Uh, we had a storm last summer and there was damage to, the, to three, to one particular tree and it got caught up in two more trees. So those were cut, okay? The three trees had to be cut for safety purposes. Otherwise, somebody would have got hurt. I have four young children that live in that apartment, one of the apartments in that house. So we needed to get it cut before it fell on some child. Um, there's another tree that's down in the backyard with the roots way up, and that was caused by by wind damage from the storm from a storm last year that really actually pulled the tree the root site and up and exposed and i think i sent mr ward uh, i mean ward some pictures he may be sharing with you because i don't have them set up to share but i'm not set up to share i'm sorry i apologize um if but uh, anyway there's no can i just say there's no question that this is within the riverfront area there's no question that the, these trees were cut within the riverfront area um, there's some question as to whether or not the work could have been done under the uh, exemption for firewood cutting, but be that as it may, Mr. Decker is willing to plant some trees, replant some trees in that area um, to mitigate the loss of, of trees that occurred. So yeah, um, I'm I'm just screen sharing. Is this is um, this is the the tree that got blown over, is that, that right, Mr. Decker? Yes. And then I agree, there was this, this dead tree right here in the lower lower right-hand corner that, uh, yeah, it was obviously dead when it was cut. Um, and then there's a lot of, you know, the debris from obviously the, the activity. Uh, what I did have a question about is these, um, in the center, there's a, there's a little wood pile. And then there's what looks to be three or four, I don't know, or five um, large pieces of tree trunk or tree trunks. Was that the one where you had the problem with the storm and threatening the house? I believe so. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, we recently, uh, for a different reason, we went with Mark Stenson to look at uh, we had some questions about citizens group that wants to do a, a project in cleaning up the bloody brook uh, and so we went over to the site uh, and it looks like you have quite an infestation along this property of Japanese knotweed and I, I was wondering if that was part of you know your thinking too was to clear some of that out. I Well Mr. Uh... Mark Stinson, I, I talked to Mark, if, if I may speak, I'm sorry. I don't oh, yeah, to... please, please do, Ward Smith. Um, yeah. I, I talked to Mark Stinson and he suggested that. My only hesitation in recommending that to Mr. Decker is it's, it's a really hard thing to take care of. It's a, it's a, it's a moving target, you know, you can cut it and, and you know, you just had a previous uh, request for determination of applicability and I, I wish them all the luck in the world, but I, <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to get rid of um, Japanese knotweed, especially when it's a huge established stand like he has on his property. So it's hard for me to recommend that he do that. I mean, he'd be willing to do that if he has no other alternative. But I think what he's willing to do is to plant some trees um, to replace the ones that were cut, even ones that were dead. Um, you know, Mark and I had a discussion about the uh, the, for, the uh, 
forestry exemption for firewood and Mark said, well, it, he didn't think it was 50% cover, but I don't think it was ever 50% cover. I'm not a lawyer, but I don't know whether the 50% means 50% of what was there and cutting a dead tree doesn't really reduce the canopy. So right. I, I, and I don't, I don't want to argue about whether or not it was exempt. And I don't think Mr. Decker does. I think he's just willing to put this behind him wants to put this behind him and is willing to do what the commission thinks would help improve the resource area. You know, right. certainly trees would help shade the knotweed and make it less vigorous. It's not gonna get rid of it, but it, right now it's wide open, bright sunlight and that the knotweed is, it looks nothing like in the pictures. I mean, if you tried by it now, it's a, right. it's, it's a jungle. I noticed in, and uh, when when the, the pictures I took that I sent to Mark um, Stenson, the knotweed is was all the last year's growth, and it was stalks, and it was looked like straw, you know. But mm -hmm. this aerial view, I think it shows that the knotweed is pretty well established all along here, and then over here, but it hasn't gotten into this larger wet area, which has got a lot of wildlife and everything in it. Um, and the and the brook, of course. Um, where whereabouts does the property line stop? Is it is it? It goes it goes over to the big tree, the, the last big tree on Jackson Road before you get to that house. There's a big marker there. Okay. Okay. So all those trees on the other side of the brook are mine. Over here. I. Where yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So they're, you they're, own property on both sides of the brook. That's correct. All right. And and the uh, northerly end of it is that somewhere? Is it in this picture or is it part way? Well, the northerly is along this little broken line you have here. That's about where the property line is, somewhere in there. Okay. Uh, Jackson Jackson Road. There might be four or five feet between Jackson Road and my property. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, just so you know, I, I did ask if there was any interest in any private group thinking that, yes, this is a, it's a long process. It's hit or miss. You may or may not succeed. Any interest in anyone trying to, you know, stop the, the expansion of this knotweed and I, um, with these folks who are looking to do a source to see kind of cleanup of the brook, I haven't heard anything back definitively. I don't know if uh, you would be interested in that, Mr. Decker. We're not talking about, I was looking at trying to find a no cost solution, but I don't know that that's possible. Um, but if some group were to, were to get in touch with you expressing a desire to try to do something, is that something you'd entertain? I'd be very happy to. Since I okay. bought the property back in, I think it was 2002 or three. Okay, mm -hmm. I bought it 18 years ago. So that'd be 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we brush hog that area to keep the knotweed down, you know, once or twice a year. Yeah. Uh, my tractor's broken right now. So I haven't, I had to hire somebody last year and the year before just to keep it down so it doesn't get any worse. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have any problem. Um, I listened to a seminar that from the University of Extensions in Amherst last week. I think it was last week. It might have been the week before. That they've got a, a they had a big uh, webinar on this knotweed and how to control it and what have you. And uh, they've got some bugs that you can put out there uh, that are supposed to do something about destroying the knotweed. I don't know if you're aware of that. No, but I was certainly interested in any any information you have uncovered. So, um, but you know, we, we just try to that house was falling in when we bought it in uh, eighteen years ago. We jacked it and redid the whole house, and uh, my my son did most of the work. I provided some supervision, and uh, but he he did most of the work. He did a fabulous job. But, you know, like anything else, uh, uh, we run out of money. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, uh, you know, just, just so you know, um, I, I probably, if I were, if I were more, um, more in tune with being the chair of this committee, I probably would have 
um, explored a, a different path. But once I found out uh, what the recommendation from the DEP was, and then I um, Sue told me that it was your property, I, I just figured it would be cleaner if I just went ahead with it. And then we resolved the issues that we have. And um, Pete, when you visited uh, with, with Mark Stenson and we saw the property, did you have any thoughts about, um, you know, this issue? Uh, this is Pete Law. Um, other than that, that uh, part of the Bloody Brook there and that whole little marsh area and that, that wetland area, is, is, it's a beautiful spot. <laughs> it's, uh, I can see why people would want to stop and look in there. There's a lot of nice wildlife and so forth. Um, as far as the, you know, replanting, uh, plant some trees, I think that would, uh, would really help on that one slope there behind the house. I think we need to know exactly what type of trees so that they fit into the vegetation and, and making sure we're capturing the, uh, the essence of the wetland there. But I, I think that's a great approach Ward. I think we could do something with that. And, um, if Mr. Decker is open to some of the public cleaning out that uh, not we were not going to get rid of it but you know if somebody's willing to take it down and get get rid of it and open up the site and if the town would like thing if the town would like to acquire an easement for that area i'd be glad to give it to them providing they maintained it that's another option too uh, that you could could look at but uh yeah, I, I think uh, we need to know a little bit more about the plan for the replanting the trees. Uh, I, I think the uh, the quote was willing to replant some trees. We need to know kind of how many, what size, what type. Um, but I think that's probably uh, you know a really suitable answer there for that for that slope where it was uh, cleared out. So we have Mr. Decker has uh, his daughter has some trees, oaks, pine. I don't remember what the other ones were. One was an apple, which is not native. So that's not, it's gotta be native. Yeah. Um, the site contains some of those big trees that you talked about are cottonwoods. Yeah. So those could be purchased. I looked um, on New England wetland plants and they have cottonwood trees for sale. Um, so, I, you know, whatever the commission wants to see, I think if the commission wants to issue an enforcement order directing However many trees, I think that's the easiest way to handle it. Other, otherwise, I can give a proposal and we can have another meeting, at which case you would presumably approve it if you agreed. Um, but if you want to just issue an, a, another enforcement order directing him to plant, you know, I don't know how many trees he cut, but do you know, Mr. Decker? I, I, I think we cut three live trees. Three maybe, live trees, but we could, you know, six, maybe there was a fourth, six or eight, you know, get a little bit more, six or eight in case some of them die. That would. And what would your advice, Mr. Smith, be to to, to plant the trees sort of at the near the where lawn, the um, at the edge of the lawn there, where the knotwood is. Yeah. So it would cover the knotwood. Yeah. Uh huh. That would help down the road with the foliage to take care of that yeah. somewhat because it likes to somewhat. Open. It's, it's, it's somewhat. I mean, it's, it's so hard to get a, rid of. It's not an answer, but it definitely, if you look at knotweed where it grows under under trees, it's much less vigorous than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wide open. And, and uh, this is Pete Law and uh, Mr. Smith, your, your question of the 50% canopy is a good one. I'm not sure if it's a canopy of, if it has to be existing foliage, uh, canopy of the tree itself. That That's a fine point that uh, is is beyond my lawyerly well, expertise as well. And I'm not a lawyer and I don't really want to argue that point. I just yeah. want to find a, a, a good way forward. That's all. Yeah. I, would you be uh, would you be willing to present us a proposal next month or would yeah. you rather we do uh, an enforcement and, and bring I'm it always, to you? I'm always I'd always rather it get settled quickly, but if the commission's not not comfortable with that, I can give you a something for next month. If, if the commission has in their head what they'd like to see, it's fine to just require it. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then it's done. I mean, the time for planting is kind of getting over. But That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let, let me ask you a, a sort of a planting question, um, Mr. Smith. Um, 
in, in the order that we sent out, we talked about possibly doing this in the fall. Is that a better time to plant trees? Yes. <laughs> and uh, I mean, spring just, is spring is great, but I, we're we, we're kind of right. It's been really um, dry this spring too. And as far as um, as far as uh, you know, being able to cut back the knotweed periodically, as he, Mr. Decker says he's been doing, um, is that something that um, part of the part of this enforcement order was a cease and you know stop activity? Yeah. Um, do we? Do you feel that we need to resolve this question? And so if we wait a month, everything still has to be in a, in a stop stop mode? Or, yes, things okay. still have to be in a stop mode until you issue another enforcement order. OK, I mean, and so I'm not a lawyer, but yeah. you know. the advantage of doing something tonight would be that we could allow um, the, the I'm not sure I have enough uh, knowledge yet to make a decision tonight. So. I that's would be fine. leaning towards letting you that's fine. develop a plan. Doesn't have to be extensive. We're talking about tree planting. Yep. And um, and let us come back to this um, next month. But probably it would, you know, be the first item on the menu, mm -hmm. and uh, we could you know do this relatively quickly, uh, assuming we get the plan, you know, a couple of weeks ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I guess so what we would do is probably just continue it until the next meeting. Um, but what do you think, Pete? I have a or question. do you want to speak, Mr. Decker? I have a question. Sure. Uh, clean up the mess. You know, because we were going to finish cutting up the, the stuff that was down, and I was going to have a guy go in and, and grind up uh, the brush. But I got your order. And the guy, would, I told him to do it two days before that, and I had to call him and say, don't do a thing. So, I mean, there's a pile of brush there that really should get chipped, and I was going to chip it and leave it there. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to know if, if you want me to leave it, I'll leave it, but uh, I'd like to get it cleaned up. Right. So I don't want to do anything to get you mad. <laughs> I'm not mad. Believe me, I have no stake in this. Um, and I don't think any of the commissioners have any, any issue other than just trying to well, make sure everything's done correctly. Well, if you want to vote, if you want to vote to allow him to clean the brush up, um, chip the brush, I think that's it's in a meeting notes. I mean, I think that's reasonable if you think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. As an amendment to the current enforcement order. Yeah. So I think I, I don't have it in front of me because I'm on this small screen, but we, we can't vote against the entire enforcement order, but I think we can vote for an amendment for the, allowing the uh, brush cleanup. Yeah, I'm just trying to find my... Um... And this is Pete Logan and, and Mr. Decker, when you say the brush cleanup, was that strictly that pile of brush in the, maybe the southeast corner of the property well, that we saw in the picture? There's a pile of brush that's over close to that uh, tree that's uprooted yes. over in that area, right? So I think that would be the southeast. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so what I, I was planning to, to have that ground up. Um, in fact, I saw the guy today, and, and he said that uh, uh, he's not going to touch it until I get back to him. Because so, uh, I'd left him a voicemail after I got the order. And I said, don't do anything. And I happened to see him today. He was mowing my lawn. So, so uh, this, this is the pile you're speaking about right here in the middle, right? That's yes. Dead tree. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And I wanna, I'd want i like to cut up those other trees that are down so we can pile them and do something with it. Okay. You know, there's two or three laying on the ground there. I'd like to cut them up. Right. Um, okay. So what I propose to do is um, talk with the rest of the commissioners just for a moment to see how we can handle this so we can expedite things. Um, Pete, do you have any suggestions about like an amendment that would allow for the brush cleanup and, and the, the handling of the trees or, and then um, a way to final, um, final activity based on Ward Smith's recommendations. 
at the next meeting? Um, is that something that we would feel comfortable with or do, what's your thoughts? I'll open it up for other people to tell me. Yeah, I mean, Ben, can, this is Pete Login. Um, I don't, I'm trying to put a bunch of screens up on this little screen. Um, so I don't have the document in front of me to say which part of the document we would amend um, if there is such a thing. But um, um, hang I think, on a uh, minute. Yeah. I think what we would probably be looking to do is to um, maybe remove the um, cease and desist portion in, 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 uh, in relation to the brush cleanup and, and um, cutting up the trees that were taken down. Um, that's. Okay, well, um, can I just speak if, if I may? Sure. Ward Smith, the order says the property owner, his agents, permittees, and all those shall immediately cease and desist from any activity affecting the buffer zone and or resource areas. So that would be the one. Um, right. but you could argue that what he's going to do is not going to affect the buffer zone and resource areas. Right. And so that so would, so that could stay. You could just vote to allow him to do this work. So in other words, he can't cut any more trees because that would be affecting the buffer zone or resource area. Right. I, I'm just the suggestion. If the no, that's a good suggestion. We're definitely open to hearing reasonable because, suggestions. Because uh, that you know you don't want him to do anything that will affect the resource area or buffer zone. Right. And if you think that chipping the brush and cutting up those logs is not going to do that, then that would be something that would be reasonable for him to do. Basically, what do you think about that, Ben? Uh, yeah, it's over across. It's oh, ben might be uh, in the field. I think he might be um, in his truck working. Pete, what do you uh, think about that suggestion? Yeah, I think that's fine. I was just writing down some wording here for a, a motion here. Okay, um, good. And, uh, and uh, it's lengthy, so I may have to retract a couple of times before we get official. Um, Thanks for doing that. So I would make a motion to keep the current order in place, yet allow, uh, in order to not affect the buffer zone and resource area yet provide a provision to allow the cleanup of existing brush pile and fallen trees. Ben, did you hear that? Uh, I heard bits and pieces of it. My phone started to ring, so it screwed up my audio. <laughs> All right, can you repeat that please, Pete? Sorry. Not verbatim, but I'll try again. So I retract that motion, uh, Pete Law, make another motion that we keep the current order in place in order to, so that there is no effect to the border, buffer zone and resource area, yet allow for the cleanup of the existing brush pile and the fallen trees on property. Got it that time. Um, I would second the motion. Ben, do you have any thoughts on it? Nope, I uh, concur with all that. All right. Um, <clears throat> so if there's no further discussion. Um, I will um, call a vote on the motion and uh, Tim Hilchey, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. Ben Byrne, aye. OK, so. Um, I okay, think so we'll clear. Yeah, clear the way. So the follow up will be that um, we'll continue this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we'll have to make a motion, but we'll continue this to the next meeting. Um, you go ahead with your cleanup efforts. Um, Ward Smith will develop a, a plan to plant six, eight trees, which uh, he and mm -hmm. Mr. Decker will figure out. And um, then the, you'll present that. Uh, to us at the next meeting and then are we can- uh, Are we okay with a fairly just narrative type thing, type species, size? Yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to be, I don't want you to spend any money you don't need to spend. Okay, good. Um, 
you know, that wasn't the intent of this uh, from the outset. So I think we've reached a reasonable conclusion and I hope everybody's, you know, satisfied that uh, mm -hmm. tried to try to handle this in a reasonable way. Maybe the next time I wouldn't do it this way, but I'm learning. I have um, one Mr. more Chairman, question. Oh. Go ahead, Mr. Decker. The, um, I'm going to mow the grass where the knotweed isn't down in that area. That's part of this. Uh, what do you think, Pete? Do we, <laughs> is that part of uh, mowing lawn, mowing of lawns is exempt from the wetlands? Yeah, so. exactly. So I think we're good. Okay, I yeah. just don't get in trouble for. No, no, we're not looking to find trouble. No, it's good to ask. Good yeah. to ask so everybody knows what's going on. Right. So Mr. Chairman, this is Pete Law. I just have one question for uh, Mr. Smith. Yes. Uh, not being an arborist, uh, could you get us uh, those plans a, a little bit ahead of our next meeting so I could just yeah. verify what the uh, species and sizes yep. are so I can double check with some yep. Yep. folks that are a little bit smarter than that uh, I more than I am? I've got some ideas, but I want to talk to Mr. Decker to make sure I'm not going to suggest something that he's completely against. But Great. It, will, it will all be native species, and you know, hopefully, right. be acceptable. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any thank other you. issues? Um, if not, we can let you and Mr. Decker go. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Who is Go Sox? That's my son. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, go Sox. Um, hey. I believe that's who it is. <laughs> all right. He's sending me text all the way through this. So, <laughs> All right. Well, good. Um, well, good night. And now the rest of the commissioners we have, and you, you're welcome to stay. We have one piece of mail to discuss. And um, then we need to set a next meeting. Um, I don't think we have any old business, so... Um, I sent you the, the one piece of mail we got. Um, I took a picture and sent it to you, the commissioners. It was from the Fisheries and Wildlife Division. Um, they're working on a 15th edition of the um, Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program maps. Um, so um, I went and looked into it. That's where I got the uh, aerial view of the property at 198 today. Um, it was, uh, so I don't think we have any need for comment on this or, at all, just that we, we've accepted the mail. Um, anybody else have any issues that they wanna discuss, bring up? I do have one thing after you guys have your chance to. Uh, this Pete Law, just one question. Are we confirmed for a site walk at Cumberland Farms next, I think the fourth? It's the 4th of June. I, okay. Nothing has changed. Okay. And did Sue Brulat send you, she may have sent this twice. I just wanted to make sure everybody had their, their maintenance reports and so forth. I received that. I just wanted to make sure we we're still on for the 4th. Yeah, and I believe it was 4.30. But I'll Sounds confirm. Right. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll have Sue confirm and notify everyone. There's another issue that came up, and this is typical of the town. Um, with you know a small town like ours, um, I don't know if any of you were dialed into the uh, select board had a a meeting about the sewer pipes that are in Old Deerfield and they're in, infiltrated with roots, etc. So they have a project that they want to start soon. That, from what's been represented to me, pretty much is in existing roadways and gravelways or around Deerfield Academy and. Um, they want to try to um, expedite this, um, but of course, nobody from the select board mentioned this to us. And um, so I told the, the, the company that's working for the town that they need to file an RDA. Um, the fees for that were waived. The question is that we would need to hold um, they would like us to hold a meeting possibly on the 10th of June, which is a, a Thursday night and have a site visit. They're, they're supposed to get the RDA to us by tomorrow. And uh, 
the reason why the timing is what it is is so that Sue would have time to advertise this in the mail and and, and the, the newspapers and notify any abutters. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Deerfield Academy is the abutter, but um, historic Deerfield might be part of it, I'm not sure. Um, and I don't know of anything else coming up, but um, it's possible that we will be getting um, a more in-depth RDA at some point soon about the Mill Village Road building site. I'm not sure. I, I know that the developer has a meeting on the 7th of June um, with the planning board. Um, I don't know if they're gonna ask for another delay or not. So it's sort of up in the air. Um, do either of you have any thoughts about being able to do um, a quick meeting on the 10th? Um, otherwise, I guess they're worried about being able to get this work underway and completed. Um, June that's for the old Deerfield project? Yeah, the it's the sewer project. project. The town's responsible for it, yeah. um, but um, it's in that vicinity. I'm not 100% sure which road it is, um, but there's one area where it approaches um, a wetland um, and the, the representation that I was given today from the, um, the engineer that's trying to move this forward was that uh, it's gonna be in an existing roadway that runs by this wetland area. So, um, but obviously we'll need a site visit and, uh, and, and a plan and, and an RDA. Well, this people, as far as I know, um, it should be available for when you set up the meeting. Okay. And um, so because it's town, I'm going to, I'm going to do this uh, uh, June 10th. Um, but what I'm going to do first, Ben, is that something you could attend? Ben? Maybe he's. No, nope, sorry. Oh, yeah. Would, would you be able to attend June 10th? I just need to make sure there are three people. Yeah, that uh, shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Yeah. It, and hopefully this RDA will be done professionally and we'll have done a site visit. And, and it sounds straightforward, but some things are that sound straightforward aren't, of course. Um, and hopefully, the, you know, Bill will be available as well. And then um, should we go ahead and. Um, just schedule a regular meeting on the 24th. Yeah, yeah. That sounds fine. All right. Um, so that's good. So then we'll do one on the 10th and then we'll do one on the 24th for other business. Um, and is there anything else anyone wants to bring up? Hearing nothing, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. One thing I didn't do is realize that that uh, I should have asked at the beginning if someone could take notes, but everything was 3-0 and um, I think I can reconstruct something if I need to. Um, oh, right, there wasn't, a, I uh, was not taking very good notes. No, that's all right. I mean, I think this has been a relatively straightforward meeting, so I think yeah. okay. um, I should be able to pull something together tomorrow. We can review them, okay. Yeah. And then have you guys look at them and uh, add anything that we neglected to put in there. Um, so if there's nothing else, then I would uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.29. Yeah, and second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Tim Hilchey, aye. Ben Byrne, aye. Elaw, aye. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Alex. Thanks. Have a good night.